Hello, New Hope. Thank God for our freedom in this country. I know we all cherish it, and especially at this time, we pause to reflect on the sacrifices that have been made, the wars that have been fought, the blood that has been shed in order to secure our freedoms. Famous generals and nameless battlefield heroes have put everything on the line uh, to win that freedom, to keep any tyrant or dictator or ideology from taking our freedom from us. But as much as uh, we honor those heroes and value our physical and national freedom, we should cherish the freedom that Christ has brought to us. And every once in a while, we should review the basis of that freedom and our status in and success in maintaining that freedom. It's one thing to be given that freedom. It's something else to be living it. It's one thing to hear about this freedom. It's entirely something else to have it. It's one thing to know it's there for the taking. It's something else to actually take it. Jesus spoke very clearly and directly about the freedom he offers. It's intended for every believer. Let's hear him. In John chapter 8, verse 32, he said, You will know the truth, and the truth will set you, what? Free. Free. In John 8, 36, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Now, first of all, in order to understand and appreciate what Jesus is saying, we need to consider the people to whom he was speaking. And uh, in John chapter 8, verse 31, we have the introduction of this dialogue with this phrase, to the Jews who have believed in him, Jesus said. So these were Jews, and Jesus talks to them about freedom something the Jewish heart longed for. Now let's remember their political situation. They were people who were living under the Roman rule. They had very little freedom politically. In fact, their hope that a Messiah would come and break the Roman yoke was their ticket out from under the tyranny of Roman rule. But Jesus made it clear that he is not a military leader that his mission was much bigger than Rome, much bigger than the day in which he and they lived. So the freedom he announced really had little to do with Rome or Herod or Caesar or any worldly king or kingdom. It was much bigger than that. This freedom cannot be touched by political powers or hostile enemies. It cannot be diminished by princes or prisons. It's not dependent on the passing reign of a benevolent king. It is given by Christ, and no one can touch it. But we must also hasten to mention not only their political situation, but also the religious situation of these Jewish people. As we've noted, Jesus was born Jewish, and he lived among Jewish people. Everything about his life was Jewish. His family was Jewish. His neighbors were Jewish. Their customs and culture were Jewish. The traditions, the temple, the Torah, the Sabbath, and the synagogue were all Jewish priorities in their lives. And for the most part, these people had religion. They had boatloads of it but they didn't have true spiritual freedom. The problem was the Jewish religion had degenerated into a system of rules and law keeping. It had been taken over by hypocrisy, self-righteousness, and judgmentalism, hijacked by religious authorities who had twisted the meaning of Scripture to give them leverage to lord it over the people. That's always been the habit and hallmark of religion. Lies take over truth. Darkness hides the light. Bondage takes over freedom. It's been noted that the only people that Jesus ever condemned were the religious people. 
And he goes after them in a way that today would be considered very politically incorrect, very intolerant. He even calls them names. Hypocrites, six times in one chapter. Blind guides, blind fools, whitewashed tombs, snakes, brood of vipers. He unloaded on them. Somebody needed to, and he did, and he held nothing back. He told them they didn't practice what they preached. He told them they tie up heavy burdens and place them on men's shoulders, but wouldn't lift one finger to help them. He told them that everything they did was to be seen of men, but God was also watching, and he didn't like what he was seeing. He told them they were keeping men out of heaven and they weren't going there themselves. He told them they didn't know the truth. And if the truth was standing right there in front of them, they wouldn't know it. And the truth was, by the way, standing right in front of them. So when Jesus talks about freedom, he's talking about freedom from these guys. Freedom from these domineering cultic control freaks who want to run and ruin the lives of people in order to feed their own ego, in order to give them power and control and importance. Religion has always been vulnerable to the greed and ambition of men and women. So what's the answer? Well, the answer is Jesus. The answer is to keep our focus on Him, our faith in Him. The answer is everything we find in the Gospel of John. Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus, the door. Jesus, the bread of life. Jesus, the living water. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, the resurrection and the life. Jesus, the vine, the true vine. So this is the background. These are the people in the setting in which Jesus was speaking. And to these people, he makes a promise. To these people, weary and heavy laden with political and religious burdens, he promises freedom. And oh, they'd heard a lot of promises. Promise after promise given, promise after promise broken. And it had all, left, had all left them broken, delusion, and disheartened. And the difference between his promise and that of the political rulers and religious rulers was his promise was true. His promises were given out of concern and compassion for the people. His promises came from the very heart of God and the throne room of heaven. So... Let's notice not only the people, but let's notice the promise that our Lord gives these people. What is the promise? Well, in one word, it's freedom. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If the Son therefore make you free, you are free indeed. Free indeed. Free in truth. Free to the fullest. They'd never heard a Pharisee talk about freedom. It was always quite the opposite. Do this, do that, give more, try harder, dig deeper, climb higher, more sacrifice, more giving, more fasting, more rules, always more. And the problem is you can do all of that without a meaningful life-giving, freedom-bringing relationship with God. You can have a form of religion without the power thereof. What a contrast between what they had been hearing and what they are now hearing. What a contrast between the Lord and the legalist, between the Pharisees and the fairest of them all. Why, it would have been absurd. It's even absurd now to think about Jesus saying, you shall know the truth and the truth shall put you into bondage. And when the Son puts you into bondage, you are in bondage indeed. But honestly, that's the way some people seem to see it. 
In their minds, it's almost sacrilege to associate Jesus with freedom. They have become so accustomed to religious bondage and baggage that the idea of freedom frightens them. They have been told so long and by so many that what faith is supposed to look like that they've lost sight of the real thing, real freedom, real peace, real joy. Oh, the Lord's heart ached to give people freedom. Can you not see him and can you not hear him? As he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy. My burden is light. And yet we so often forfeit our freedom to anyone who wants to take it. How is that? Why is that? Well, because people don't know the Son sets you free, free indeed. Sometimes people don't understand the freedom the Son offers because others have stood in the way of that freedom and their voices have been heard over His voice. People don't know the truth that they have been given freedom. Christ said, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free free. When I was a new convert, I had such peace and joy, it was almost embarrassing. I was a liberated soul. I was free, free from sin, and I had the joy of the Lord and no worries. But it didn't take long, and a legalist in terrible religious bondage himself latched on to me, and he tried to put me under the same bondage. And he had the most extreme beliefs and a long, long list of do's and don'ts. He was miserable, and instinctively I knew I wanted nothing to do with that kind of religion. It couldn't be healthy or holy. And I thank the Lord that he got me away from those heavy-handed, heavy-hearted joy thieves who do nothing but attack one's freedom. Had I succumbed to his efforts, it would have sucked the life out of my soul. But then and there, I made a commitment that no man, no religion, no legalistic list bringer will stand between me and the grace of God will take my freedom away from me. Does this mean that we can live foolishly and recklessly? Does it mean we can disregard the commandments of God? Does it mean we can live antinomian lifestyles? No, of course not. It just means we are free from the burden of religion, the shackles of tradition, the oppression of man's endless list. Grace has replaced law. His righteousness has replaced self-righteousness. And once you've tasted that kind of freedom, there's no going back. Nothing else can satisfy. Lord, I want to thank you today for this very special freedom into which you bring us. It's a freedom that no man, no religion, no ideology can bring, nor can take away. It is independent of and superior to anything we can find in this world. And this Independence Weekend, we truly, thankfully, Lord, rejoice in the freedom that you have granted us uh, to be raised in this country and to enjoy the freedoms that we have. And thank you for those that have so courageously put themselves out there, sacrificed themselves so that we could have that national and political freedom. But most of all, Lord, we want to thank you for the greatest freedom giver. We thank you for Jesus and the freedom that we have when we know him and when we know that truth that sets us free in his wonderful name.
Amen.